Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Everyone welcome. Surah Rad, chapter 13, verses 30 to 34 will be covered today. These are the references and this is our contact in case anyone wishes to contact Daratul Islam. Some permanent values covered so far in the surah. What I've done is that instead of uh, doing a recap of previous verses, I thought, uh, let us look at some of the permanent values which I could pick up. And we mentioned those at the beginning of this uh, lecture. The first one is the state of a nation does not change. If we remember that in verse 11, it was stated, in Allah la yugayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. That Allah does not change the state of a nation, people, even the world, until the people over there change what is within their own psyche, what is within their own self. That is exactly what do they want from their life. Because we have choice and intent, so if we make right choices, we'll get the right results. This is based on evidence. Economically and politically backward nations are ruled by corrupt people, and these people then influence the system of the country. And we are watching this right across the world. Virtually in every country, we have uh, a lot of uh, uneasiness going on at this point in time. What is good for mankind remains on earth. This was another uh, permanent value in my view, verse 17. Ba'amma ma'yan from nasa fayam kosu fil earth. If we remember in this verse, two metaphors were given. First of floods, where the floods take away all the, all the debris, all uh, what is uh, floating in that, and then the clear water goes through. And second one was about ores or uh, metals where those are melted and all scum comes to the top and pure metal remains underneath. So over here, Quran says that if you work uh, for haq, if you make efforts and you strive hard according to the permanent values, the good will come out. If people wish to change the state in which they are, they need to strive hard to bring out what is good for them. The law of mukafat will then help them accomplish this. Next one is the law of requital functions 24-7 and does not spare any human being. Those who decide to opt for battle will not be able to stand up against haq if those following haq resolutely follow the path of Allah. And uh, there was one verse which was concluded by saying, وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي دَلَارِ That those who are kafir and uh, what they desire, it is not going to succeed if haq stands up. Now this is a condition with that. If haq does not stand up, then of course the world we are handing over to kafirin. When we come to the Quran, we make a binding unwritten covenant through ourselves with Allah. So this is, I take it as a permanent value that once we have come to the Quran, we have made, we have made a commitment to Allah that we will follow this path. That once we come to this path and we live up to our, uh, our covenant, our commitment, and then it becomes a sort of a very firm commitment. Accepting Iman is the first step on this eternal commitment to the cause of Allah in this world. Now, these things look a bit, a bit difficult, as we had discussed uh, under these verses initially, that how are we going to do it? But initially, we come as individuals, then we come together, and when we come together, we provide strength to each other. There is a lot more to it, and we will discuss it uh, as we go through uh, the rest of uh, these verses. The Quran provides all the details of this part. There is a continuous tussle which goes on in the human world between haq and battle. And again, this is a permanent value. We should never ever think that a stage will come and there will be no battle in the world. Because this is the first stage, virtually first stage for the hereafter. So it has to uh, include a lot of struggle, a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties. And uh, once we overcome that, them, and if we have a system based on haq called deen, then things start becoming easier. Presently, because we do not have system of deen anywhere, so we look at the world and we find it as uphill task. But our, our job is to keep moving forward step by step. It is simply unavoidable and is part of the system of human self-development. Because if there is no tussle between haq and batal, then our self cannot develop. 
For example, if there was haq everywhere in the world today, then we will not have any challenges. And if there are no challenges, our self will not develop to that extent where we have to face the battle. The Quran explains this by contrasting the two aspects of in human existence. It says, Hal yastavil ama wal basiro am hal tastavil zulamatu bandur. That if we look around the world, we will see that those who are blind and those who see, they are not the same. And over here, blind does not mean physically blind, but those who do not use their intellect. And we should see the difference. Since the time we have come to the Quran, we can see that a lot of realities of life have become very apparent, very obvious to us, whereas others still do not know anything about them. And then it says that darkness and light cannot be the same. And we also observe this. And that these are very tangible evidences presented by the Quran. The path illuminated by Wahi is clearly evident. And next is the guidance of the Quran only becomes available to those who look for it. It involves the participation of both heart and mind. And the Quran says, Allah zina amanu wa tatma inno kulubuhum be zikrallah. That contentment of heart comes through understanding the zikr of Allah, that is, understanding the deen of Allah. Because if there are doubts and there are suspicions lying within our mind and heart, then we are not fully convinced of the deen or the system which is presented by the Quran. So we have a lot of work to do in this regard, that is to make the Quranic values as part of our sight. The Quran is for any creation which possesses choice and intent, and it provides the route to a life of eminence and elevation in this world. And this journey extends to the life of the hereafter. So these are some of the permanent values which I thought uh, are, are mentioned in, in Surah Irad. And I will try to update it in, in our last lecture. And once we finish with Surah Rad. Now let us look at the verse 1330, which points to the solution if we wish to accept it. The verse is Kazalika Arsalna ka fi ummatin kad khalat min kableha umamulli tatlu wa alayhim lazi auhaina alayka wa hum yakfuruna bir rahman. Kul huwa rabbi la ilaha illa huwa alayhi tawakkal tu wa alayhi matab. I've highlighted some of uh, the salient points which I thought uh, need a uh, bit extra attention. O Rasul, we have sent you as a messenger to this nation in the same way that messengers were sent to many nations before this. So sending of messengers, sending of wahi to all human beings is a continuous process right from the beginning when human beings appeared on this planet. Because Wahi is the only guidance which can help us to acquire that self which is fit for system of deen in this world and the hereafter. It is fair enough that Wahi was sent to all human beings right from beginning and now it is preserved within the Quran. So we don't need a, another messenger to be sent by Allah. The aim is this, that whatever Wahi we reveal unto you, you should present it to them. Actually, this is a very important point over here, which Quran mentions that once we understand Wahi and we accept it through our heart and mind and we are convinced of its validity and its usefulness, then we automatically feel that we should pass it on to others. So what we are doing today is part of that effort that we want to share it, we want to develop ourselves and then move forward. The state of these people is such that they do not acknowledge Allah as Rahman. Now, this is something very interesting over here. So what happens is when people think that this world will continue the way it is, they essentially are denying the attribute of Rahman because the attribute of Rahman tells us, if we remember Surah Rahman says, Ar -Rahman -Quran, that it has come if you want quick results in your world, then you should follow the Quran. And the Quran's knowledge will help you to get results within your life, within a life, lifespan of an average human being. So this is important for us, that we should never ever think that the results cannot come within our lifespan. What we need to do is keep making effort. Tell them that he is my Rabb, and other than him, no one else has authority and power in the universe. See. After falling for Rahman, Quran very clearly says that he is the Rabb. 
he holds the keys to everything all laws are being followed strictly as those have been implemented or established in the human world so what we need to do is to follow the path of the quran and not to worry about the results my complete trust is on his firmly established laws and their outcomes fi kul huwa rabbi la ilaha illa huwa people read this la ilaha illa illa allah say that uh, we, we, you know as a, as a slogan or as a phrase but it has the meaning of whole of quran concealed within it implied within it my complete trust is on his firmly established laws and their outcomes and this is why in every matter i go back to him now let us look at some of the finer aspects of this verse for the reflections first is the issue of sending of the messengers is not is noted here to provide information for the rational side of man i e we need the option of external guidance over and above our desires and intellect and we have seen that when desires and intellect are emotions these operate outside the guidance of he what devastation and chaos they co- cause in the world if there is no external guidance that then we do not have any choice what is the point of having choice and intent if we do not have the choice of living a better life based on the guidance of he but it is not made available and explained to us so what quran is saying is that once we bring wahi into our life that means now we have a choice to live a life within wahi or to live a choice without wahi if we do not accept wahi we do not bring it into our cognition cognition within our thought process then essentially we do not have a choice to live a life other than following our desires and intellect those who gain even some understanding of this guidance but are not aware of the time scale potential of allah's way may become discouraged thinking that if they follow it but the results will not manifest within the life span of human life their consciousness will not get maximum benefit from it so over here that is why i i've already met mentioned uh, explaining the meaning of the verse that by mentioning rahman here in this verse quran is drawing our attention to the possibility of getting quick results within a time scale of one life span and say the quran noted the divine attribute of rahman to assure us that the quranic value system possesses the trait of emergent evolution and that is in surah rahman quran says ar rahman allama al quran next one is another point of significance noted here is where it is said huwa rabbi la ilaha illa instead of allah with all his attributes rab is mentioned here i e pointing to rububiyat the system will provide complete security and protection and this is what mu'minin need to aim for with resoluteness and steadfastness so first rabbi and then it says la ilaha illa that if you follow this path then rububiyat will come in in your life you will be able to establish the system of deen which will cater for the needs of both self and the body and these things are important for us that we keep reminding ourselves so that these become part of our psyche now let us look at the next verse 1331 the question of miracles and human desire for quick results this is another interesting verse walaw anna quranan suyirat bihil jabalu aw kutiyat bil bil ardu aw kull ma bihil mauta walillahi alamru jamian afalam yabase yabasil ladina amanu an law yasha allah allahu la hadan nas jamian wala yadalu ladina kafaru tusibuhum bima sana tusibuhum bima sana u kariyatun aw tahullu qriban min darihim hatta yati ya wadullah in allah la yukhliful miyat he the quran says from the demand which arises from these people for tangible miracles the thought also arises in the hearts of some members of your jamaat that if their demand is fulfilled then they will all accept iman and that will be really good say to them that now human have this desire even when we come to the quran initially there is a sort of a desire that why can't we have results very quickly but once we understand the procedure which the quran puts before us then we realize that it's a very slow gradual procedure of self development because we are looking at developing a system we don't want people who can establish the system and then run away they become discouraged so quran is asking us to 
stick to this to 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 the value system of the Quran and see how the results come. Firstly, the changes which come within us. So there is no question of miracles. Even if there was such a Quran because of which mountains had started to move and far off distances of the land could have been traversed in the twinkling of an eye, so much so that even corpses had started to talk. Even then, these people would never have accepted iman. And the reason is that by subjugating our intellect. to some kind of a miracle we are actually paralyzing our own intellect because rationality doesn't come into it because reasoning doesn't come to it can't come into it human beings only convincingly follow that path where they see the rational side of it where they are convinced that by following this path they will achieve that which this path is promising them to lead to This is the reason why Allah kept affairs under His control. That is His laws, and in this respect, the law is that whoever wishes to obtain guidance, he should make use of his intellect and reasoning. Do people of your jamaat, that is Mu'minin, still not understand this matter? That if the aim had been to make people Mu'min forcibly, then this was not at all difficult for Allah. He would have simply created people like that so that all traded the right path. But He intentionally did not do this. he has left this matter to the choice and intent of man hence these people who are rejecting this invitation will continue to adopt the path of transgression will even go to war in opposition of it the consequence of which will be that trouble will continue to visit them because of their misdeeds so over here momini in jamaat is addressed through rasulullah that you should not look for miracles you should not look for quick recipe because the moment we the followers of the quran look for quick results we look for shortcuts then essentially we are saying that this sirat e mustaqim is not the shortest possible route to our destination we look for something else whereas if we understand this sirat e mustaqim this is already the shortest possible well established route to our destination so these are the things about which the quran is trying to convince us by presenting evidence and this process will magnify to such an extent that the affliction of war will itself descend close to their abode that is mecca this process will continue like this until the struggle reaches the decisive stage and they suffer the final defeat so over here quran is pointing to this fact to jamaat e mu'minin that you keep doing your efforts and the time will come where your opponents will be subdued they will be they will come under the control of the system of being and they themselves will then realize that this is better than what they had before this will certainly come to pass because the law of allah is immutable in its manifestation of consequences his promises are of a surety fulfilled and that is why quran concludes it in allah la yuklifu al-mi'ad that allah does not go against his commitments if we live up to our commitments the quran says allah will not go against his commitments and we will see that these commitments get fulfilled even when we are treading on this path initially because the change which comes within us is in line with what is stated in the quran next is verse 1331 and some reflections on that first one is human beings resist the use of intellect and reasoning as it involves effort and we see that because following the path of four fathers following the path of majority we don't have to use lot of intellect or reasoning all we have to do is to just conform to the values of the system in which we live and they have to come out of their zone of comfort especially when they are invited to the quran they do not see any immediate benefit from listening to something new and human beings want to remain comfortable they want to have the shortest route to their desires and quran is presenting a long route because we have to strive hard on this path they see losing benefits of the wrong system most look for solutions for their problems of life within the system in which they are born and they live and prefer to die within the same belief system because within that belief system they don't have to do a lot for example in the religious belief system they know that they can get whatever they want within the the capitalist system and then there is some kind of a concept there of the hereafter so these are the things which prevent human beings from using the rational side of their intellect the desire for miracles is part of the psyche that demands that something supernatural is shown to them so that 
then we will think about the guidance of the Quran, which is solely there to enhance our understanding so that we can see the problems created by man-made systems which shackle human cognitive potentials. For example, even a miracle is shown to us. Of course, the whole creation of man is, is a miracle. The presentation I'm giving, giving to you is, is out of my intellect. And intellect is abstract. Thought, thinking from thinking in itself is a miracle. But even if we have miracles, still we have to come down to man-made systems and try to solve human problems. So this is something to which Quran is drawing our attention. Not looking for miracles is a sign for those who have come to this path that their approach to the Quran is precise and will lead to furthering their understanding of this path. This is an important point. I thought I'll share it with all of you that if we are looking for miracles, then we have essentially not seen the rational side of the Quran. We are not looking for miracles because not looking for miracles is part of the development of a rational side and reasoning side of our intellect. Because then we have come to terms with the Quranic message that it is not about miracles, it is about putting things right. It is about establishing the system of being so that we do not have the theme and the scheme. So miracles have nothing to do with solution of problems of the theme and the scheme. These are not going to go away. Not looking for miracles is part of this fact that we have understood the Quran. Allah has pointed here to another important aspect of our psyche, which is more focused on physical existence and has invited us to examine our cognitive makeup, which is based on our emotions and intellect. If we use our intellect, then we can move mountains and also get life from that. Both are within our reach. See, the Quran has explained it beautifully right from beginning to the end that hereafter is a fact of life. And if we use our intellect and develop it the way Quran has invited us, then all these facts keep becoming manifested right before our eyes. We have the potentials to convert the impossible into the realm of possibility. Instead of looking for miracles, we need to create miracles through our efforts. And we can see how, how many miracles human beings have created by using the things which have been provided by Allah, which are kept already within the crust of the earth. Just see the smartphones, just see the communication revolution which is taking place around us. Just look at uh, the airlines and ships and, and, and what not all around us which has made our lives so convenient, at least the developed part of the world. And even if we come to the redistribution of resources, we will see that that will be another inverted commas miracle by which we will uh, create a system of being which in itself will become a sort of a miracle for whole of mankind. This mentality of miracles exists in the religious world of rituals where people wish to be rewarded for doing nothing. So this is something which is at the back of the mind of human beings. They want something for nothing so that they don't have to strive. Whereas the striving itself is part of self-development. What's the point of having arms and legs if we are not making use of them? What is the point of having intellect and if we are not making use of it? So making use of these things is part of being alive. By performing some rituals, they think they become qualified for some paradise. So this is that underlying factor that human beings want something for nothing. The Quran has rejected all this by saying, for example, Quran has said, it will be worthwhile to have a look on this verse from Surah Toba, verse 20. The Quran says that by feeding those who are hajis who are coming over there and by looking after the mosque, you think it is equal to striving in Allah's path, jahda fi Allah, and having iman in the hereafter. See, very beautifully over here, amana billahi wal yawmil Two important aspects of iman are mentioned over here, that iman in Allah, the way Quran has explained, and in the hereafter, which is implicit in it, which is linked to it. And both cannot be the same. La yastauna in the lahi. And Quran calls that priority as 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 Zalimin, because if priority becomes religion, the ritualized part of it, then we essentially try, will, will be doing injustice because we will not be utilizing our full potentials for the good of mankind. Note the end of the verse, see also verse 2177.
Now, verse 13, 31, some more uh, reflections on that. There's a lot in this verse. The Quran informs those who are already on this path not to look for shortcuts in this Rath and Mustaqim, as it is the shortest possible, most straight path to achieve those successes which are noted in it. I have already explained that Srat and Mustaqim is the shortest possible. We cannot get anything shorter than that. Looking for numbers is not an issue here. The issue here is of changing our inner self and giving new life to it with the guidance of Allah. So if we do not understand these things, then we are looking for some other things which, uh, which are extra Quranic, which are not given in the Quran, then essentially we are looking for shortcuts. And that means our self hasn't developed to that stage where it is understanding the system of being presented by the Quran. Understanding the emergence of this new Quranic psyche is something to which this verse has drawn our attention. This needs a lot of our attention, what is mentioned in this verse. So we, we need to go through it a few times. Allah reminds us that Balillahil Amru Jamiya. Everything is covered which is required. This Amr of Allah, we need to understand that what is given in the Quran is answering all our questions. But those questions have to arise first in our mind. So we should make an effort to bring out those questions. If there are no questions, then we should create some. Find out the working of Allah as explained in the book and we will never look elsewhere for the resolution of the issues of our life. Here a very important aspect is highlighted by the Quran for us by stating that regarding those who pursue the path of kufr, observe and study them closely. La yadalullazina kafaru tusibuhum bima sanahu. What Quran is saying is that these people who do not follow the path of the Quran, whether wittingly or unwittingly, it doesn't make any difference. In the law of requital, if we put our finger in fire, it will burn. It doesn't matter whether we know fire will burn or not. So if we look at their life, the way, for example, the world of today has so many problems, so much conflict and chaos created by human hands that we cannot go mistaken i.e. the acts which they deliberately plot keep producing wrong consequences. And we can look at it that what all is going on in the world in terms of, for example, false flag events, for example, war. Someone needs to point out to them that there is a better way to live world, worldly life. The concluding part of the verse is a warning for those who do kufr. And this warning is meant to be conveyed by those who are momini. And so important is that in our effort to become a moment, we should comprehend everything which Quran is possibly throwing at us, putting at us in today's environment. And for that, we have to gain a lot of knowledge and make and create a lot of questions and look for their answers and try to answer them individually as well as collectively. Why should they convey this? Firstly, by giving warning, we learn the finer details of the Quran. Obviously, I cannot warn others unless I know the details myself. Because if I want someone that your deeds will bring bad results, then I should know that those deeds, how will they manifest themselves in the shorter run and in the longer run and its functioning. And secondly, it helps us to understand this aspect clearly that in Allah, Allah, you cliffful miyad, that how does Allah does not go against his ahad, his commitment. Since by accepting Iman, we have made a commitment to the cause of Allah. He will never go against his commitment towards us. And this becomes manifestly clear once we follow the Quran, once we understand its value system. It is the beginning of an eternal companionship. We need to come to grips with the true reality of this mutual covenant. I put it down this sentence. I thought uh, it reminds me as well as to every one of us that this companionship is not going to break. And why should we then feel frustrated or going to despair? Rather, we should be all the time very strong, very strengthened, and uh, through our mutual discussion and through our mutual communication, we should strengthen each other. And our resolve should always be that we are not going to quit this path. Verse 1332, those people who are not looking for guidance take the Quranic message in jest. This is an interesting uh, verse, short one. All this will take place slowly. And during this time, these people will continue to ridicule your announcements. But you should not lose heart at this. Because 
once we follow the Puranic uh, message, its guidance, it is a slow process. The self doesn't develop overnight because self has to convince itself that the path I'm following will bring results. And they have, we have to do a lot of good deeds as well so that the good results start appearing in a few years. So it's not a this, it's a slow process initially, but once we come together, then this path, the, the, the results start coming a bit quicker. This kind of ridicule also used to take place with the messengers before you. So people to whom you get, we give message, if they do not come to this message, they will ridicule. They will have some kind of a, a, a contemptuous attitude towards people. I remember once I explained uh, this, uh, the message of the Quran to someone. And he said, well, what you said looks very intriguing. And mind you, he was a psychiatrist. And I was talking to him about human self. Those people also received a period of respite according to our law of requital. But when despite this, they did not divert from their wrong path, they then became seized. So another important point over here, Quran has said, is that if we take something lightly, if we joke about it and we take it as a jest and we think that oh no this is nonsense essentially we are closing or shutting the gate towards getting guidance see how dangerous it is that we are totally blocking our mind from something which is a fact which is going to affect our whole of our hereafter at that time they came to know how the consequences of their deeds were pursuing them and how firm is our grip and ultimately death is a fact of life for each one of us. And if we haven't uh, taken care of ourselves in this life, then obviously at the time of death, once we leave this life, we are going into darkness. But as compared to those who are moaning, they exactly know what is their uh, great future is awaiting them. Further elaboration of this verse, it is part of basic human psyche that when people in power do not like something, they try to belittle it first, inwardly and then outwardly. Because initially they look at it suspiciously and then they come out when they see that these things are going against their desires. And if they're in a position of power, they will try to stop it as well. Because ridiculing something is essentially, uh, essentially nullifying it, essentially giving a wrong projection of that truth using all means depending upon their status and power. The Quran warns us about this kind of thinking and invites us to continuously reflect on all aspects of our life as possible. Those on heart must never become influenced and distracted by this. In fact, Quran is training us, educating us that you should be prepared for this and also pointing to the psyche of these people who take things lightly in life. From the start to the end, the Quran consistently asks us to think with an open mind and not to reject its values and commands without reflection. If these are to be rejected, then this should be done deliberately so that at least the best can be obtained from the physical aspect of this life. So interesting point over here is that if we think that the Quran, we are not going to follow the Quran, then we should not remain with the Quran half-heartedly. Because if we are half-heartedly on the Quran, then we are not making best use of this physical life. We will remain under doubt, we will remain under suspicion, we will be skeptical about it. And when there is a doubt in our mind, we will never give our best, at least to the physical life. So that is the point I'm mentioning here. It is interesting to note here that even when we wish to live this life without any major issues, this also requires the balance in our physical life. For example, we need good diet, we need exercise, being sensible with our wealth, stable family relationships, fulfilling commitments and aims good conduct and character as defined by the society in which we live, etc. So even when we are living under a man-made system, there has to be a rule of law because the rule of law makes that life more predictable. If there is no rule of law, then of course there will be chaos even in that society. But Quran says that man-made rule of law, man-made laws will ultimately take you towards decline because human emotions do come in at some point in time. When the messengers used to share the guidance of Wahi, people in power ridiculed it as they knew this goes against their vested interests. People who have wealth and power do not wish to become weak and see their wealth diminish if made available for the good of all. The only way to give, give it up is when we think of a higher purpose other than the immediate aim of a life of subjugating others. 
Subjugating others is something which is a terrible disease, psychological problem through which we lose the true purpose of life. The guidance, getting guidance from the Quran is impossible. If there is a slight desire lying within us that we should control others, then we are essentially not getting the best out of the Quran. It is within our basic psyche that we seek power and wealth. And the only way to understand this is to come to the guidance of the Quran. This seeking of power creates three pillars of corruption. Because this is through which the power manifests itself in the human world. And if we remember, Quran is pointing to all three, which is Pharaoh, Karun, and Haman. Pharaoh is the one who controls human beings physically. Karun is the one who controls wealth. And that wealth serves the purpose of Pharaoh. And Haman is the one who tries to control the emotions, the, the belief system of people. And this is related to religion and media in today's world. We can see the resemblances of these characters in every part of our world. And last one is the verse makes it clear that whatever we do, the consequences of these deeds chase these persistently without any laxity or favor. We need to become convinced of this and we will see that with the passage of time, results will start to manifest in the collective domain of nations. Next verse is 1333, Psyche, which rejects the law of Mukafat. <laughs> Say to them, just reflect a little on this, that when the state of harmony and information gathering of the law of requital of that Allah is such that it monitors the deeds of every individual in such a way, can it be dependent for help for himself from those whom these people declare as his partner. Very important point over here that the Quran says if the law of requital is working in your life and Allah is making sure that every deed is accountable, then those people whom they make as partners, can they be of any use? Now this is actually for us, those who have come to the Quran. Say to them that though you have been informed about the expense of Allah's knowledge, now regarding those entities whom you declare as his partner, just explain the details of their knowledge also, so that it can be determined what knowledge is it on the face of the earth that has been left outside the sphere of knowledge of Allah. Over here, Quran has said that how can, if you look at it, then you will see that whatever is going on in this life of yours, you will find a reason behind it. You will find an evidence behind it. Even in man-made system, we can see that if a system is not functioning well, what is the reason behind it? If it is working well within the physical sphere of life, what is the reason behind it? And about which you and about which you wish to inform Allah through these partners, through these partners who know nothing. Or is it that you have never delved into the depth of these matters and pondered only superficially, that is repeated whatever is heard? The truth is that these people have no evidence of the truth of their claim. They make use only of their emotions due to which their schemes appear very alluring to them. And it is because of this that they have halted from coming on to the right path. So we get distracted. Even if we question our life at some point in time, we become engrossed so much in our day-to-day -day life, even those who are well off, that we do not pay any attention outside the sphere in which we are. The law of Allah is that those people do not make use of their intellect and reasoning and are carried away by the flow of their emotions can never come to the right path. So over here, Quran says, that there is nothing wrong with fulfilling our desires, but these have to be within the guidance of the Quran. And there is plenty of scope even within, we sometimes feel that we might be restricted. That is not the point. Point over here is Quran is drawing our attention that you have a higher purpose. And once we have a higher purpose, then human beings make extra effort to achieve that purpose if it is fulfilling. So for those people who adopt the wrong path in this way, who can possibly show them the right path? So Quran over here says, Vasaddu Amsubili, that that the path which is of Allah, we are actually become an obstruction on that. That if I, I'm not following the guidance of the Quran, actually I'm misguided myself and I'm also misguiding others. 
So as a result, the majority becomes misguided. And once the majority becomes misguided, then we will find the word what we see as of today. Now, over here, I have put down some further points, aspects of human psyche needing our profound reflection. Three important aspects of human psyche are noted here. Firstly, for us, that that Allah is a witness on all that we do, i.e. the law of requital keeps an eye on our deeds. This is the foundation of the system of being. So this is we know this is a permanent value, and we need to become keep ourselves aware of it. Those who reject the above evidence-based fact, their behavior is noted next. Such people do shirk in their lives by accepting Allah's dominion in the outer world, but do not include his guidance in worldly affairs, which leads to the creation of problems for the majority of mankind. This, I thought, is an important point, which I will uh, elaborate a bit further, that if we do not think that our actions are accountable, then there is nothing within us which will stop us from doing wrong or exploiting others. And even if we accept that in the outer world, there is a creator, there is God, or there is Allah who, who is controlling everything. But we will be totally oblivious of this fact that law of requital is working within our life. And as a result, we keep doing wrong. And if we do wrong and we also possess power and wealth in the world, then imagine how much wrong we do to everyone else. So that is the point I'm trying to make over here. Then the Quran asks us by stating, to bimala, bimala yalamu fil ard, reminding us that Allah knows all that is in the world, physical and non-physical. And this statement provides assurance to us that the Quran contains all that we need in order to live our life under being. Nothing is omitted as noted elsewhere. So over here, Quran is actually telling us and, re and, and trying to strengthen our heart and mind that you are not alone in this effort. This, you have become part of the plan of Allah and you are working for Allah and it will, it will lead you to success. What the seela kulle shayin mahudam ramatalle kaumijunanun. And if we look at this verse, the Quran says, if you remember, we have covered it under the seela of Yusuf that he has explained everything. Whatever we needed is given in the Quran and it is a guidance and a rahmat. And rahmat we know is related to nourishment. It is related to the attribute of Rahim and for those who have Iman. So guidance plus the means of nourishment for body and self. So whenever we talk about the Quran, we should keep it in mind that the system of Deen will cater for the body as well as the self. Any system which does not cater for the self has nothing to do with the Quran. Those attracted disproportionately by the temporariness of this world, worldly life do kufr. Here the Quran has made us aware of the condition of those who think their life will end with them. So that is another point covered in the verse. And then is the verse is concluded through an evidence-based statement that the people who reject the guidance of the Quran do not want its guidance and we must not waste our precious time trying to convince them. See how much evidence Quran is presenting before us to understand our own psyche and the psyche of others. Once we have come together as Mu'mineen and our hearts are united, we can see the change which comes among us collectively. So those who are outside this, uh, this um, group or who are not interested in the Quran, we can look at their psyche and we can find the, the weaknesses in that psyche. The earlier we come to realize this, the more free our psyche will become for the tasks of being. So that is where the true freedom lies. I cannot give freedom to others unless I understand the freedom which the Quran is drawing my attention to, in which the Quran says, first you acquire the understanding of that freedom within your own self, then have the desire to pass it on to others. And so this is an important point. If I want mankind to be free from all, all the problems, for example, freedom from fear and grief, then essentially I have to understand myself that exactly what Quran is asking me to do. Next verse is 1334. The loss of the hereafter is far greater as it is eternal. This world is finite. This is another very important point covered here. And we have gone through these things before as well, but it's good to be reminded. Allah 
the consequence of their wrong path will be that destruction will come upon them both in this worldly life and the hereafter and the destruction of the hereafter will be far more severe than this there will be none who can save them from the grip of the law of requital of allah very important over here it looks as if the the punishment and which human beings collectively especially face in this life being part of the wrong system as if this is coming from allah and we know it doesn't it is through our own hands that we bring injustice to our own self we we create problems for our own self because quran has categorically said that allah does not do injustice to human beings and linking it with the life of the here after the quran is essentially defining the scale here by saying a dunya that is this is a finite scale of this world in which we are living and we know the life ends with death and then quran says that al akhirah over there the scale is eternal it is infinite and just compare the two time scale and then you will realize that if you land up in the here after without a developed self what are you going to do over there now finally reflections on verse 13 34 first one is as we know the quran is addressing people through the lips of mu'minin and of course in today's world it is the books by tlu islam which present the correct meanings which are applicable to the system of deen what i have done over here is i deliberately went through it and i because i have read extensively and i know that nobody else wherever i i listen to many talks and nobody talks of deen as a system it is only tulu islam's literature that is the lama provis literature where it is mentioned the quran is uh, quran's system is mentioned as a system of deen when we look at the world around us and the problems it has we have to convince ourselves by going over it again and again again and again look at it that can we find solution to this problem within the world of uh, non non quranic one system and we will come to this conclusion no so if anyone who is on this path of the quran but is not talking about the system of deen then he and she is far far away from that sirat al mustaqim which the quran has defined for us so that is why i put it down over here books by tulu islam the quran presents its realities from the stage of facts i e looking at the world from the direction of the life of the hereafter when it declares that the chastisement of the hereafter is far more severe than the punishment we receive in this life as a consequence of our deeds this needs to be viewed in the light of the time duration as we know in this life the life of the hereafter is eternal and we are possessors of divine energy which gives us the traits of choice and intent we are not going to die so bottom line is because we are possessors of divine energy we have a self within us and the self is changeless and we can check it right in this life uh, even if when we go old our thoughts don't go old our self doesn't go old by being conscious of an existence in the hereafter but with an undeveloped self which does not meet the evolutionary requirement of that life of the hereafter we need to seriously think about this issue this is something very important for us even those who have come to the quran to keep reminding ourselves that if i do not have adequately developed self when i die what am i going to do if that self does not meet the needs of the here after and we know right in this life through the quran that how precisely things move in this world all our deeds have scales our thoughts have impact on us take this factor into account as values to our existing value which becomes far more colorful and fulfilling which we can ever imagine without the guidance of the quran and if we take these things into account then we will see that the change which comes within us the self which we get the as it develops this life becomes far far more meaningful than even those people who have not come to the quran and quran asks us to compare ourselves with others that is why it says that the blind and seeing are not the same we know allah of the quran exists factually and we get plenty of evidence about his existence by following the quranic values manifestation of divine attributes to the development of our self so this becomes a proof in itself this becomes an evidence of the existence of our life self if we fail to come to grips with the functioning of the law of requital in this life then essentially our self will not possess this as part of our constitution and without this our self cannot go on to evolve further i have used this uh, a bit very strict and a very precise language over here because i thought 
it is good to remind ourselves. We need to reflect on this aspect in the light of Yudabbirul Amru Yufassilul Ayat Al Allahum Bil Lakaay Rabbikum Tufinun. If you remember, we covered this uh, in our first lecture on Surah Rad. The Quran says that we should try to understand all the signs which Allah has presented before us. If we look at those signs, then we will be convinced at some stage by reading the Quran, by studying it, by discussing it mutually that. This possibility, Belakai Rabbi Kuntu Kanun, that possibility of a system of Rubibiyat will appear before us as a reality. And that is where we will be, Quran's language and altered commas will be meeting our Rabb. We come to terms with the understanding of Rubibiyat to understand the purpose of our creation. Because we know that uh, under the attribute of Rabb means that everything which is created should ultimately reach its destination. Uh, the purpose of its creation is that destination which is defined for that. And for us as human beings, our destination is sirat e mustaqeen which means this is a path which will keep going forward and our self will keep developing. And Quran has purposely, has not defined our, our ultimate end because there is no end for our self's development. And that is the beauty of our life. We want to live eternally and Quran is offering it to us. And it is saying that this eternal life has to be made meaningful. And meaningful means that under the guidance of the Quran, under the direct guidance of Allah, we develop ourselves and make this life beautiful for ourselves and as well as the hereafter, because this life is connected to the hereafter. We come to understand the man-made world for far better using the light of the Quran, and this then paves the way towards understanding the need of Rububiya in the world. And thanks for your time and joining us in sharing this presentation.